my glad honor to present the son of our Liz house here. Uh, today, I would like to share with you some of our research work on the application of conductive polymers for the flexible electronics. We know that the flexible, flexible electronics and the wearable electronics, for example, this kind of affordable mobile form demonstrated by Huawei and Samsung. Also, this kind of uh, wearable devices, such as used for health monitoring or communication, they become more and more important. And uh, although the market is still is not so large, but uh, we can foresee the market become larger and larger. If we consider for the materials, the main challenge is on the flexible electronic materials, because we know the conventional electronic materials like metals or and the inorganic semiconductor like silicon, they are not the flexible material. But if we, so we need a new materials for many different materials have already been demonstrated for their application in the flexible and wearable electronics. In our research, we focus on the intrinsically conductive polymers because these materials have their unique advantages and they have many, in, many applications in the flexible and wearable electronics. So at first, I give a very brief introduction about the intrinsic conductive polymers. For example, this is a polyacetylene, polyanilin, polypilo, and the polysulfine. There are some representative uh, intrinsically conductive polymers. They have the conjugated backbone. So when it's stopped, they can have a high conductivity. Because this is a polymer also has a high conductivity. So they have the unique advantages, such as they can have a high conductivity, like metals, while the other mechanical properties, like plastics, such as the light weight, uh, it's easy to form this kind of polymer thin film and they can like, have high mechanical flexibility. So of course the high mechanical flexibility is uh, very important for the application in the flexible electronics. And for polymers, we know polymer usually we consider the quite cheap materials. So for this kind of intrinsically conductive polymer, if they can manufacture that in large scale, their cost they can be very low as well. Then if we consider for the application in the flexible flex and the wearable electronics, for various application, then we found that there are, there are still some limitations. These limitations relate to the processability, the conductivity, the stretchability of the conductive polymers. For the conductive polymer today, the most uh, popular one or the most successful conductive polymer is called the P dot the PSS. This is the chemical structure. So here P dot has a conjugated backbone. So it have the it have the positive charge. So the positive charge is balanced by the counter anions. For P dot the PSS, it has an advantage compared with the other conductive polymer is the solution processability. Because P dot PSS could be dispersing water and they is commercially available. So it's easy for us to get a high quality thin film by solution processing. And also this polymer has a good thermal stability. In addition, it has a high transparency balance in the visible range. If it can be produced in large scale, we believe the cost could be achieved. This picture shows the um, show is a P dot PSS film on a plastic substrate. So you can see this is a transparent and flexible. But uh, if we consider the application in the flexible and wearable electronics, then we need to improve the conductivity and the stretchability. Because for the conductivity of P dot PSS from the water solution, the conductivity is only about one Siemens per centimeter. So if we consider, for example, if we consider for the, for the application as a transparent electrode, the RTO India tin oxide, this is the most popular transparent electrode. 
is the e conductivity is 2,000 to 6,000 siemens per centimeter. So the conductivity of P.PSS is really too low compared with RTO. Why P.PSS has such a low conductivity? There are two main factors. One is related to the excess PSS because we need the egg excess P PSS, PSS is non-conductive to stabilize the P dot, P dot this is a conductive. So, we, so in, the, in water, there's this kind of core shell structure. This yellow core is the conductive P dot, while this blue shell is the non-conductive PSS. So even the, for the charge transport, they need to uh, cross through the non-conductive shell so, th so that's why in this case, the conductivity is not so high. Another reason is related to the conformation. We know if we consider for the material structure, P dot is a rigid polymer. So it prefers to a linear conformation while PSS is a saturated soft polymer. So it prefers to a, a, this kind of coil conformation. But the P dot, they have a positive charge, PSS has a negative charge. So they have a strong uh, column attraction between P dot and PSS. So that at least some of the P dot, they have to adopt this kind of coil conformation, like a PSS. This coil conformation will be cause the localization of the charge carriers. So that's a low conductivity. In terms of this understanding on the low conductivity of the us prepared P dot PSS, the to the least the, uh, sorry, the principle to enhance the conductivity of P dot PSS should include the removal of some non-conductive PSS from the P dot PSS and the, the conformation the change from coil to linear for P dot uh, for P dot chains. So then in terms of this principle, the strategy should be try to lower the attraction or we can say the screen, the column, big attraction between P dot and the PSS. If we can lower the attraction, then it could cause a phase segregation between P dot and the PSS because P dot is hydrophobic while PSS is hydrophilic. So, People develop many different methods to enhance the conductivity of P dot PSS since 2002. That means 19 years ago. Then we notice in 2011, is 10 years ago, there is a, this is a research work by a lab at, uh, in Germany. They reported this two-step method. So the first step is uh, ethylene glycol add into the, this clearance pH 1000. It's a P dot PSS aqueous solution. Then this can enhance the conductivity of P dot PSS from one to 600 or to 800 Siemens per centimeter. Then in the second step, they treat the P dot PSS in ethylene glycol bath. This can further increase the conductivity to about 1400. A Siemens per centimeter. This is the highest conductivity for P dot PSS by 2011. Then we also purchased this the the Clevis pH 1000 from the company. Um, the in one year later in 2012, we, we reported our method to treat the P dot PSS with a sulfuric acid. We found that when we use 1.5 more sulfuric acid to treat the P dot PSS, we can enhance the conductivity to about 2,400 Siemens per centimeter. Of course, this is the highest conductivity for P dot PSS. In addition, we found that if we repeat the treatment for three times, the conductivity can be higher than 3,000 Siemens per centimeter. This conductivity is comparable to the India tin oxide RTO on glass, on glass substrate. We also investigate the charge transport mechanism. So in terms of this charge transport mechanism, when the temperature, so because the X axis is one over square root of T. So that means this end is low temperature. This is a high temperature, this is a room temperature, basically. So if the temperature is below 230, uh, 230 K, 
you know, have this kind of linear relationship between the, resist the resistance and the one over square root temperature. So this indicate that at this temperature range, this is a one dimensional variable range Hobby model. This is the charge transport mechanism usually for conductive polymers. But we found that when the temperature is higher than 230K, the resistance become almost independent of the temperature. It does not change too much. This indicate that the temperature higher than 230K. So the, the behavior become metallic or semi-metallic behavior. So this is also the first time to observe this kind of metallic or semi-metallic behavior on transparent conductive polymers. We also develop some other methods, such as use mild organic or inorganic acids, or use this kind of gem diode. Gem diode is, the, is a diode have two wedge group, hydroxy group on one cup of atoms. And also we can find that we can use some organic solution, organic salt to enhance the conductivity of P.TSS as well. So this is a, a graph presented by, uh, presented in a paper, in a review paper by Professor Xu in 2015. He, in this graph, it uh, lists the milestones of the conductivity of P.TSS fields. These two value were reported by our lab. Uh, in 2014, a lab in South Korea, they used the fumed sulfuric acid to treat P dot PSS. They found that it can enhance the conductivity to about 4,400 Siemens per centimeter. So in this area, we are happy to say most of the methods to enhance the conductivity of P dot PSS were invented by our lab at the National University of Singapore. So then you may have a question, how about the, tra how about the transmittance if we consider for the application of transparent electrode? So it has a very good transmittance. Uh, if we compare with the RTO on plastic, so this is the most popular transparent flexible transparent electrode. PET is a plastic. So when the thickness of the P dot PSS is around the 66 nanometer, so the transmittance is comparable to RTO on, RTO on PET. Then we demonstrate this application as a transparent electrode. One is for the polymer solar cells. So because this work was published in 2012. So for this polymer solar cell, the active material is PCHT and the PCBM. Then in this, uh, uh, in, in this uh, uh, current density voltage curve, the red curve is the control device with RDO, and the red curves are for the device with the sulfuric acid treated P dot PSS. So basically, the performance of the device with the sulfuric acid treated P dot PSS is comparable to the control device with RTO as the transparent electrode. In 2015, we also demonstrate this application as the, uh, as the transparent electrode of perlux gas solar cell. So this is at 2015, the, so the efficiency at 2015 is 8.6%, actually it's quite good the one for the flexible perlux gas solar cell. Actually, we, as we know, this is the highest by 2015 for the flexible perlux gas solar cells. So, so in this case, we can, enhance the conductivity of P dot PSS for its application as transparent electrode. But then if we consider for the stretch of electrode, we know P dot this is a conjugate polymer, it, have a, it has a high rigidity. So the stretchability is quite low, it's less than 10%. So one idea is to blend such a rigid polymer with some soft polymer like a PVA, PG, and uh, WPU, w, particularly WPU water dispersed, dispersible uh, polyurethane because this is an elastomer. Elastomer, it has a high uh, stretchability. So this is the, the results of the P dot PSS with the WPU. Then in this case, when such as when it depends on the P dot PSS loading. 
So in this case, so suggest we got, when we have the increase the elongation to about thirty percent. So so in this case, the P dot the PSS load is about the, about twenty percent. But in this case, the conductivity is only about one hundred siemens per centimeter. So this is not very high, but it's good enough for some applications. I will give some example about the application of the P dot the PSS WPU blend. We also found that the stretchability can be improved by through the plasticization. For example, if we use this molecule, it's called a desorbit. Desorbit is a bicompatible, it's a common, it's a common uh, chemical. So you, by blend P, by blend P dot PSS with desorbit, we can observe a conductivity higher than 1,000 Siemens, Siemens per centimeter. So this is the highest for biocompatible by uh, conductive polymers. And uh, here we can, we can see suggest we got it depends on the uh, on the load of the desorbit. Here S is for desorbit. For example, if it's uh, 0 0.8 0 percent, the stretchability is almost about 35%. And in this case, when this is the during when the polymer film is stressed, is stretched. So it's a such as from zero to 60%, the resistance does not change too much. We then we studied the uh, mechanism, the mechanism for the plasticization and uh, investigate from other chemicals to plasticize P.PSS. the PSS. Here it shows the chem structure. So here we found that the plasticization is related to the OH group, the hydroxy group of the molecules. So that's why we call, we divide the chemicals into two different groups. One is the multiple wedge group. The second group with a, only one wedge group or no wedge group. So we found that when there are more wedge groups, the stretchability is higher. And uh, in addition, we found, we plotted the elongation at black and the Young's modulus with the enhancer. So, solubility parameter delta H. This delta H is related to the hydrogen bond formation. So here we find that when this delta H is higher, basically the elongation of black is also higher. Then how about the conductivity when we use the different plastic sizes, such as for the, uh, 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 the conductivity, such as for, for, the, for this TG, in this case, we can also get the conductivity higher than 1,000 Siemens per centimeter. The, resist, the variation of the resistance is also basically similar to the, uh, to the polymer of the P dot PSS with the desorbit. So in terms of the characterization, we propose the mechanism for the stretchability enhancement that is related to the this structure, because I just when we have a desorbit or other kind of plasticizer, because they have a wedge group, then this kind of desorbit they can form hydrogen bomb with the PSSH. So this will be destruction the hydrogen bomb among the PSS chain. So that's this kind of plasticizer the P dot PSS. Then we demonstrate the application of the stretch of P dot PSS blend. Um, that, um, and that and the plastic size of P dot PSS. So at the first uh, for the blend of P dot PSS as uh, the WPU, one application is of, as the stretchable electromagnetic shielding. We know today people talk about the well of electronics, but we know the noise is always a import is always an issue for for all kinds of electronic devices. So for the stretchable electronic devices, we should have a stretchable electromagnetic shielding device to, uh, to increase the quality of the sickness. So we demonstrate that the P dot the PSS and the WPU the blend can be effectively shield the electromagnetic noise so this uh, all goes, this depends on the load of the P dot the PSS. But basically, even is even it's only 10%, the, the, this the effectiveness could have, that they could be higher than 45 dB. And the, this uh, the effectiveness does is not affected when the polymer chain, uh, the polymer film is 
uh, is stretched. Another application is we demonstrate this as is application as the stretchable heat for articular thermotherapy. This kind of articular thermotherapy, as you know, usually so is used for the particular for for the treatment of the joint. Uh, so usually we use a medical uh, such as a, such, such a salon pulse, uh, this kind of table. It only it can be used only for like one or two hours is the longest. If we can use uh, this kind of stretchable heat, then we can just apply uh, electricity. Then we can keep the temperature. So in our study, we put a P dot PSS WPU and we add uh, some graphene. The graphene is used to improve the thermal conductivity of the plant. So then we can find that when we apply a voltage, uh, so we can get a stable temperature. So of course, when the voltage is higher, the temperature is higher as well. So basically we can control the temperature by control the voltage. Another application is as the compliant electric, compliant electrode of the dielectric elastomer actuator. So here at the first, I give a very brief introduction about the principle of the dielectric elastomer actuator. So this is basically when we put the elastomer between two electrodes and if a high voltage such as 1000 volt is applied to the two electrodes. Under such high voltage, it can have a mechanical deformation. So then by control the voltage, then we can, uh, we can develop it as an actuator. So the, for this application, in turn, because the polymer, the polymer film will be deformed. So there is a requirement on the two electrodes as well. They should be compliant. So that means they should be stretchable. They can follow the mechanical deformation of the elastomer layer. Of course, they should be conductive to be as electrode. The conventional electrode material for this kind of dielectric elastomer actuator is the carbon glaze. So this is a liquid and non-transparent. So we, we demonstrate that the stretch P dot PSS WPU can be used as the compliant electrode. So basically we use it that to as the compliant electrode. Here I show you a video. So at first we assemble it into an actuator, then put the two actuators as a, uh, as a solder, lobo uh, solder robotics. So here, this, this is our device here. So when we apply voltage, it have a mechanical formation. Then when we control the voltage, you can see the, uh, it can move along this, along this direction. And because in this case, the electrode and the elastomer, all of them are transparent. So you can see this is, a, it has a high, trans, a high transparency. So the, another, another application we demonstrate this as the biopotential electrode. Just now I mentioned the P dot the PSS WPU, the blend they can have a high stretchability and the desorbit can be used, can be used to plasticize P dot PSS. In addition, we found that if we mix these three components together, P dot PSS WPU and the desorbit together, they are stretchable certainly. But in addition, we found that they are, they are safe and adhesive. So then we demonstrate the application as the stretchable and adhesive dry by potential electrode. Why we want to demonstrate this application? You may know like ECG. ECG is quite popular tools in the clinic to uh, for our health to, to monitor our health. Uh, but the, for this kind of ECG, the other the other by potential like EMG and EG. So for this kind of biopotential, 
the conversion electrode and the gel electrode, they made of the silver, silver chloride. They are wet electrode. So these are wet electrode that are not suitable for the long-term monitoring. Then if for the long-term monitoring, we need the dry electrode. So, so we demonstrate the P dot PSS WPU and the disorbit. They are they are stretchable, they are conductive, they are adhesive, and they can form a good contact contact to skin. So that's they can be used as the dry bipotential electrode. So here we demonstrate this application for the uh, as a dry electrode for the ECG. So this is the signal by use our PWS is our our polymer blend dry electrode. So this is a conversion of gel electrode. The signal basically by the two electrodes is quite similar. So this is when the when the volunteer is in static, so it's, there's no movement. Then if the body is moving, such as in so in this case we demonstrated we put a white blood to induce the vibration of the muscle. So this is a vibrator. So this is this is the electrode. When the, so this is the distance, when the distance is shorter, so then in this case the, the vibration of the of the mass will be stronger. So, so so here we will find that when it's static or uh, or the slit type of electrodes they give rise to high quality sickness. But then when the separation becomes more, so that means the uh, the mass vibration becomes stronger. So in this sense, if the device, if the electrode is non-adhesive, the signal the signal is distorted. But for the adhesive for our polymer dry electrode, they guess, they are adhesive to skin, they still give rise to high quality sickness. We also demonstrate the application for the EMG and the EEG. So here, like uh, when we have the uh, we have the movement of the different fingers, then we can see the different the different EMG signals. Here I'll go, then we also can we can use this EMG uh, for the to control a robotic hand. Uh, let me show you a video. So this is the EMG signal. Yeah, when the highest, when the finger is moving, so we can see the EMG signal. This is a low body. Then we can use this EMG, EMG signal to control the movement of this low body hand. So we also demonstrate this application for the EEG uh, electrode, such as this is the eyes blinking, we guess, when we open the eyes, we can see the sickness. And uh, also when you hear a sound, then we can, uh, this the eye closed, we can also see the sickness. Uh, so only the eyes move, we can see the, see, see the sickness. So we also demonstrate the application in the clinic on patient. So this, uh, this ECG signal is uh, obtained by use our dry electrode. So this indicates the absence of the P wave. So this patient have a problem in his heart. Also then we test the EMG on a healthy uh, volunteer. So the EMG signal indicates that uh, the, the, this, uh, this volunteer is, uh, it has a good health. So this is what I would like to share with you some of our results on the, uh, on the application of the conductive polymer in the flexible electronics. First, that we work on the enhancement of the conductivity and the demonstrate the application for the flexible transparent electrode such as polymer solar cell and the Pelasca solar cell. Then we develop methods to increase the stretchability it includes the formation of polymer, polymer balance and the, the plasticization. Then we demonstrate the application as the stretch of electrode that was the robotics and also as the electrode of the uh, thermal therapy and uh, also for the electromagnetic shielding. Then uh, the another ones we demonstrated the application as the adhesive dry bipotential electrode. So 
uh, I would like to thank the group members and our and the, some collaborators for their contribution in this uh, research work. Also, the fund the fund agency for the financial support. With this, I would like to thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.